All right, so welcome to Blender. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is learning a little bit about the interface of Blender and how to navigate around it. Uh, the first thing that I want to cover is the program menu up here at the top. Now, actually, you know what, before I talk about that, uh, I want to talk, uh, give you guys a little bit of a breather because Blender is a complex program. There's a lot of buttons here, and I know it can become overwhelming a little bit. Um, the important thing to remember is the vast majority of these buttons we will not use in this class because all we're worried about is modeling for a video game. Uh, a lot of the buttons in here are going to be useful for animating and creating movies in Blender and doing that type of thing. Again, really all we're worried about is creating models for a video game. And they're going to be pretty simple models at that. We're not going to get too complicated. A lot of the models that we use in this game, we're going to go, we're going to purchase, or not purchase online, we're going to download from online. That's going to make it tremendously easier on us and it's going to make this game take a lot less time to produce. Um, but the majority of this work is going to be done by the modeling team. So if you think that you're going to be interested primarily in 3D modeling for our video game, then you need to pay very close attention to what we're doing and you need to learn uh, the objects of this game. If you're not going to be doing the modeling for this uh, for our game, or you don't think you're going to be doing the modeling for our game, I still want you to pay attention because Blender is a very fun program and you're going to get a lot out of it. Uh, and also, all of the assignments we do in Blender are going to be for a grade, so it's important that you understand how to do them. Uh, so what we're going to do, just go ahead and click off of this window that comes up when you first open Blender, and you're going to be, in, or you're going to be, uh, you're going to see the opening interface for Blender as well as the kind of standard new file uh, that has a cube, a camera, and a light. Now, in Blender, uh, up at the top left, the first thing that we're going to see is the program menu. This is where things like File, Edit, Render, Window, and Help are all located. The Help tab is important because if you ever don't know how to do something in Blender, you can look at the manuals, tutorials, and support, and other things uh, in Blender that you can, uh, other resources for you where you can teach yourself how to do certain things. Um, the file menu is where the new button lo is located. So whenever we need to create a new file, this is a great place to start. If you need, if you open Blender and the work that you have that you did the previous day doesn't automatically show up, which it doesn't usually do, uh, the open and open recent are both good options. Now, because we're working on Google Drive, the open recent will not always show um, what you started with or what you were working on last. So it's good to also use the open. Um, before we get started with doing everything though, we need to make sure our Google Drive is running. So go down to the bottom of your screen. If you're on Windows 10, there should be a search bar. You can search for Google Drive. Make sure you click the Google Drive application and not the Google Drive web search. If you're on a Windows 11 computer, you'll see a Windows icon sort of in the middle of the bottom of the screen. Click that and then there should be a search bar at the top of the pop-up menu and you can search for Google Drive there. Uh, the reason we want Google Drive to be running is we are not allowed to save files to these computers. Instead, we're going to have, instead, we need to be able to save things to our Google Drive. Now, that is going to mean that your Google Drive will very quickly fill up for this class. So you have an option. You can either ensure that your Google Drive stays as clear as possible from other classes, or if that is not possible, then you need to go, then you need to take some time to purchase a thumb drive for this class. It's a uh, flash drive. I recommend getting one that has at least 32 gigabytes. You will be able to plug this flash drive into the computer and save and load from that flash drive. All right. So moving forward, um, with the uh, next, past the program menu, were in, in, so next now that we've covered file. We're going to look at edit. So under edit, you can go to things like undo to step backwards if you accidentally make a mistake, or you can press control Z. Then you have render. We're not going to worry about render and window right now. Uh, to the right here, we have the different workspaces. We're not even going to click on those. Uh, we most likely won't be using those uh, unless you're in the modeling team, in which case you'll be using modeling and UV editing quite a bit. But we're going to look at those two workspaces later. Most likely, mostly what we're worried about right now is just the layout workspace. 
Now, on the right-hand side of the page, we, we first see the uh, scene outline. In the scene outline, you're able to click on different objects uh, and select them. You're also able to rename objects like this cube. I can double-click it and rename it to object or something like that. Um, and underneath the uh, scene outliner, I can go down here to the bottom. This is the properties and settings panel where you can change properties and settings and do a bunch of different things for individual objects. Again, we're not going to really be too worried about this right now. We'll learn a lot of these, but the majority of these uh, options you will not use for creating these 3D models. Next on the left hand side we have our toolbar. This will change based on what set of tools we are using or what uh, mode, what editing mode we are in. Uh, for select for object mode, so for object mode, we get a basic set of navigation and moving tools to be able to move objects around the screen. We also get some menus in here to change our view selection uh, and add more objects and change general object settings. Again, we're not worried about that quite yet. Uh, on the right hand side. Uh, we have sort of our viewport. We have some of our viewport options. We can do things like make our objects transparent and see through things. Uh, we can turn on and off the user interface to only see the models. Uh, or we can show or show or hide the navigation gizmo. And we can show and hide a bunch of other things as well. So, like for example, we could. Make sure that we able to, we're able to see face orientation. That's a useful thing for some reasons. We're not going to worry about it right now, though. All right. Uh, now we're going to talk about how to move your view around so that you can actually see different sides of an object. The first and most useful of these is orbit. If you click and drag the center mouse button, you will orbit around the center of the viewport. This is useful to be able to do a bunch of different things. Um, but it's pretty pr it's pretty taxing on your computer. So if you have a if you have a slower computer, try to move slowly. Uh, if your or if your computer starts stuttering, try to move a little bit slower. That way, it's not putting as much stress on your computer. Next, we have pan. This will allow us to go back and forth over the screen uh, to navigate from left to right or up or down. To do that, hold shift and click and drag with the center mouse button. This is going to move the screen left and right. Um, a good way to navigate is to combine orbit and pan to navigate around the screen and get to different locations. So practice orbiting and panning for a little bit to get a look to get a feel for how to get around the screen. Next up we have uh, zoom. You can zoom by scrolling in or out. However, you can only zoom in so much before uh, the, it stops zooming. Sorry. And once you zoom very far in, your uh, pan won't move you very far. That's why it's again a good idea to navigate with uh, zoom and or, or with pan and orbit instead of trying to zoom in on objects. Because again, zoom will only take you so far. So practice zooming, orbiting, and panning to get to different locations. Now if you're ever in a time, in a situation where you are you don't have a mouse, uh, or you don't have an actual mouse, maybe you're working on a laptop and only have a trackpad, or maybe you're working with a drawing tablet. To pan and zoom, you can use the gizmo in the upper right hand corner to click and drag to get to different viewports or viewpoints. You can pan by clicking and dragging the hand or zoom by clicking and dragging the zoom tool. Now, right now, we're in what's called a perspective view. We can see the length, width, and height of objects. To get to an orthographic view, we can click on one of these axes. This will allow us to see everything aligned perfectly on the y-axis. This is very useful, especially if you're trying to make sure that something is lined up just right. You can also see the x-axis and the z-axis for similar reasons. And you can click and drag again to re-enter the perspective uh, view for a little bit until you can get the hang of it pretty well. Okay, 
Next, we're going to talk about uh, toggle camera view. If you click this button, you can toggle between looking at the camera in your scene and looking at the object. The camera in your scene is located right here. You can move it around or change its size, and we'll talk about how to do that later. This is what a camera looks like. Uh, in this object here, this is a light. Uh, so whenever you're modeling or rendering to get a preview of your object, this light will tell you what uh, this this light basically. Um, it's where the light in the scene is coming from. It tells, it's going to tell the pro program where to put shadows and where to put highlights. Um, well, whenever we're modeling for Unreal Engine, we actually don't want any lights or cameras in our final product. You can have them in there for preview purposes, but we don't want any lights or cameras in our final project. That's very important. Uh, so to delete an object, you just press the click on the camera and press delete key. It's, it's that easy. So go ahead and take this moment to delete your camera and delete your light. All right, next up is we're going to learn how to move objects in Blender. We've learned about how to move our camera around. Now we need to learn how to move objects. So if you click on an object, uh, to click on an object, you just basically click on it. But make sure that you have your select box tool selected. You can also, if you want to select multiple objects, click and drag over the screen while you have the select box tool selected. If you want to select some objects but not everything, then you can use the, the freeform selection tool, kind of like the lasso tool in Photoshop, but we really haven't learned Photoshop. Um, but you can do this to only select part of an object or uh, a group of objects. And then we can go to the select circle, which is where you're just painting a selection. You click and drag over it and it will select it or deselect it. Uh, we don't really ever want to use the tweak tool. We're using the select box tool to select an object. So once you have your cube selected, you'll notice that it gets a little bit of a gold outline around the edge of it. That means that that object is selected. Now to move it, uh, if we want to move it left, right, up, or down, we can click here on the move tool. And you'll notice that three arrows appear as well as three boxes. Uh, these allow you to move it on the y-axis, the x-axis, or the z-axis, or z-axis. If you click on this red square, you're only going to move it on the x and z-axis. If you click on the blue square in between the uh, y and x-axis, you're only going to move it on the x and y-axis. And same with the green square. Now instead of having to click on these lines, which can sometimes be a little irritating, we can use some hotkeys to do this. So say you're on the selection tool, you've selected something and you want to move it. You can click G on the keyboard and start and click it and just move your mouse and it will start moving it over the screen. Now we don't ever really want to move freeform because if we move freeform, you'll notice that it doesn't really stay where exactly where we want it to stay. It can go in some weird locations. So instead, if we press G and then uh, type the letter of the axis we want to move it on. So if I type X, it's going to only move on the X axis. If I type y, G and then Y, it only moves on that object's Y axis. And then G and then Z, it only moves on that object's Z axis. So I can move it to the exact position that I want to move it to. So go ahead and press Control Z. Move it around for a little bit, get the hang of moving objects, and then press Control Z until you get that cube back into the center of the screen. Next, we're going to learn about rotate. So, to rotate an object, uh, you're going to uh, click on the rotate tool, and you'll see this gizmo pop up around your object. You can click and drag over the green again to rotate around the y axis the red to rotate around the red axis, or the blue to rotate around the Z axis. Or you can just click anywhere here to rotate it freely. You can do some crazy stuff with that. Now to get to rotate easily, with the selected object selected, you can press R on the keyboard to start rotating. And again, you can press X, Y, or Z. 
or something I didn't cover before, if you want to rotate or move on the X and Y axis but not the Z axis, you can press rotate or move and then press shift Z. This will exclude the uh, Z axis from the rotation. Though when rotating, you might as well just be rotating around the Z axis whenever you do this. But it can be useful in some situations. All right, so practice rotating your object a little bit, then control Z until it gets back to the original spot. Next, we're going to learn about scale. So to scale an object is the same as move. It's gonna produce this little gizmo and you can click and drag to change the scale of your object. You can go to crazy large scales. If you click and drag from the white outline, it will scale it uniformly. Uh, but you can warp it by clicking on these different uh, axis. Uh, or to scale manually, you can press S and it will scale it uniformly, or you can press the, the axis label to scale over the axis. And you can press shift axis to scale over the X and Y, but not Z, or shift Y to scale over the X and Z, but not Y axis, and do some crazy things with that. So practice scaling for a bit, and then bring it back down to the original box. Once you've done that, you have completed what we're going to be doing today. Um, so go ahead and take this time to fill out the exit ticket over how well you understand this topic. Well, thank you, and I will see you guys tomorrow.